I used to think I wasn't a poncho type of person and I think I've even said it here on this channel but I've totally changed my mind and I've got a really amazing one to share with you. It's a pretty easy sew. Look at this boucle knit. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. I hope you have had a few couple of days that have been special if you're celebrating the holidays, the end of the year. I hope you are enjoying yourself. I've been traveling back and forth between my parents and my in-laws, but that's fine. <laughs> I always do the same thing. So yeah, I hope you've had a few days that have been really, really enjoyable. And today I have a poncho. I have never sewn that type of garment here on the channel. I think this pattern was released at the start of 2021 maybe. Pattern Emporium, it's called With Love Poncho. And I remember seeing it and thinking, no, that's not anything I would wear. Like I don't wear ponchos. Yeah, I even said it once, I'm not a poncho person. <laughs> Well, things can change and you know, sometimes we just have to be more open and try new styles. And I just couldn't get it out of my mind, especially because I was inspired by a fabric I found, one of the shops in my parents' city here. Lovely boucle knit in a lovely dark pink. Oh my gosh, I, I bought it. I bought about two meters thinking, you know, it'll be enough for something. And then I just started having visions of it being a poncho and yeah, turned out to be a poncho. A poncho can be a pretty simple type of garment, really. What I like about this pattern is that all the details that you can mix and match can make it look really different. So there's basically about four styles that you can mix and match here. There's an asymmetric neckline that lies open with buttons. You can button up or not, I love that. You can also do a rolled neck, you can do a hood, or you can just do a simple sort of t-shirt type neckline that's just more open with a neckband. So there's four styles. If you're sewing the t-shirt style, which is just a regular round neckline, there's also instructions for you to make a, a scarf that can be removable. So it's a large round piece that you put on here and it just looks like a big, big cowl neckline that you can just take off if you want. So that's cool. If you want, you can put pockets on the front. There's a kangaroo pocket. You can add patch pockets on the front as well. Those are options. I didn't really want to add any pockets to mine. I wanted mine to look as dressy as possible and I thought the pockets were just going to make it look a bit more sporty which is fine, you know, it can be sporty, but I wanted mine to be really simple, really clean and no pockets on the front. You can make it different lengths and you can make it a top length, then you can make it high low, which means that the front is a little shorter than the back, or you can make it a long length. I started laying it on my fabric and there was no way I was gonna get my poncho out of two meters unless I did the top version, which is just a shorter version, but it's not cropped or anything, it's still, fine <laughs> it's still pretty long so i'm glad i was able to get the shorter version but there's a longer one if you want for the sleeves you can also have them be a little bit shorter so half length or three quarter length i made mine three quarter length i think there's more practical more coverage there the hem allowance is quite wide and you finish all these corners with mitered corners you don't have to measure them and figure them out yourself like i've done in other tutorials you have the slant already cut there on the corners so you don't have to think about it you just have to sew them so that's really nice. Pattern Emporium is having their big sale that they do every year at the end of the year. 30% off, no code needed, the whole site. They never do a large sale like this for the whole year. You know, whenever they do a pattern release, they have a 15% off discount, but this is 30. So it's really, really good. So don't forget to check it out. In this year, 2022, I've sewn about 2021 garments from Pattern Emporium and they're just so wearable, so lovely. I will leave you my playlist link down below if you want to see them all and get some inspiration. All of my videos have sewing tutorials to help you just get a good visual on how to put these together if you think that's useful for you. I do it with a lot of dedication. So have a look at that. Find my affiliate link down below also. Do receive a commission back and that supports the work that I do here on YouTube. So if you were planning to purchase patterns, using my link doesn't cost you any more and it does help me. So thank you so much. So depends on the type of neat fabric that you use. This can be for any type of weather. It is designed for neat fabric. It's not going to work with woven fabric, especially with the type of necklines that there are available. So you can use a sweater knit, a boucle knit, cable knit. You can use polar fleece, French terry, some sweat shirting, stretch velvet. If you want a really light layer, you could use rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, modal spandex, those types of fabrics. But just consider that those are going to end up looking way longer than you thought because those fabrics grow vertically as well. 
And if you wanted something really light, you can make this out of mesh and it just be sort of sheer. You can make it out of stretch lace and have a really different look. So whatever you want is gonna work. <laughs> Sizing is from four to 30 Australian. In the pattern, when you are printing, you can choose your layers and you can choose heights, short, regular, and tall. So you can click on those first and then you can print out your size with the height file. So I think that's really nice. I printed out the tall version. It's just gonna be longer and more proportioned to my height. So I think that option is really nice. It should be a really easy to fit garment. Look at the size chart. I just sold an 18 because that's my size with Pattern Emporium. And about the bust, if you have a sewing cup size that's D or more, it suggests you add an inch of length to the front piece. So it's just to even it out. You know, we have this projection here that sometimes makes the front end up looking shorter if we have a larger bust. So just consider doing that. I did do that with mine, even though I only have a C cup. I thought it was gonna be worthwhile for me to add an inch on the front. So mine is one inch longer in the front and at the back it's an inch shorter. But then when I wear it, it looks pretty even. I did film the sewing for this, show you how to sew my neckline option. I only had time and fabric for one poncho, so I chose that asymmetric neckline that's open with buttons right here. I love that, I think it's so, so beautiful. And that's the only piece that was gonna fit my fabric also. <laughs> if I'd wanted to do the hood, it wouldn't have fit my fabric and I definitely wanted some detail here on the top. So let's see, it's really really easy to put together. You'll see it took me about two hours to sew including the cutting time and the hand basting time. For this poncho, I've picked a collar that lies on the side open with a placket that can be open or closed, can have buttons for decoration or functional. So this rectangle here is the main collar piece. You cut your pattern piece on the fold. I, I actually use the fold of the fabric right there. That's why you see a mark. And then you have these two pieces that are gonna be the plackets. I have interfaced it as per the instructions, but only these, not the main collar pieces you can see. And it is a rectangle. You'll see notches here on the top. You'll see some on the center. You basically need to align it so that you have a shorter end there and the longer here. Basically, all you need to do is fold these lengthwise. And we're just gonna close up one of these ends. You can see there's a notch there, but there isn't one on the bottom here on the side. This is the top edge that you want to close there and then we're going to flip it to the other side so that's how we're going to start i'm going to leave this here but when i have these finished i'll come back to this okay so here we have one of these tabs or plackets and you can see these notches up here on the top and these two on there you don't have them so choose the side that has a lot of notches fold them right sides together here quarter of an inch seam allowance and i'm just going to do this with a sewing machine Now we flip these and we're going to have a nice finished edge on the top but we're going to have a long raw edge and a short raw edge and that's fine. These long ends that are raw I'm just going to base them together with a long stitch length. I'm going to do this on the edge. Okay so there's the tab, this is the finished edge, this is raw, that's raw, this is finished. So I'm going to do some top stitching now. I'm going to top stitch on this fold right here. This is purely decorative, it'll keep it flat also. So that's how one of them look. There's a folded nice clean edge right here and right there. This is raw and that's raw and we're going to have two of these mirrored. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. Here we have the neck piece. I've turned it so that the fabric is right sides up. So this is the pretty side of the fabric. And now I'm going to take these tabs and put one on this side, put one on that side. I'm just going to make sure that I find the raw edge right here. Align it to the raw edge here. Same as at the bottom, this has to be raw also. And I'm going to put it right there. So basically you need to make sure this is all raw and that this is all raw. And here you're going to have a folded edge and a folded edge all finished right there. And we're going to mirror this to the other side. Now we're going to take this and fold it onto itself, right sides together. And everything's gonna match up perfectly. These edges are gonna match. The tab inside's gonna be right there in the center. And all we're gonna do now is do these seams. It's 
a few layers I'm gonna do it on the sewing machine I find it less bulky and then we can flip it okay so here we have it it's all folded onto each other right sides together and in the middle we have these tabs make sure you double check before you sew that you have raw edges on the tab here and along the sides everything's raw it's really easy to flip them and make a mistake here double checking that everything is raw and that the finished edges are inside over there so now two straight seams i'm gonna use my sewing machine just a straight stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance pretty long stitch length to go through all these layers 3.5 to 4. i think a walking foot would have been perfect for this to avoid it stretching at least the top layer sometimes the presser foot starts stretching out the layer on the top but it's not an option with this machine i'm not sewing at home so i just have no option to do that i would suggest if you're sewing through a lot of layers with a knit a walking foot is super helpful to get a neat finish but as you see i'm doing a trick i'm just using the tweezer that i use to thread my overlocker i'm using the flat side and i'm just sort of helping the fabric along avoiding it getting stretched as i sew and i get a really flat edge so it's basically just going like this as you sew and it keeps it from getting stretched out. It works, I've done this before when I'm in situations like this. <laughs> so I'll do the same on the other side. And what we're gonna get is these tabs, plackets that are interfaced. And I'm more structured than the rest of the collar. It's gonna give it that extra finesse. I think it's really cool. Typically in women's wear, you would put the buttonholes on the right wearer side, which would actually be this side on my left hand. If I do this, bring one in, bring one in, and then you'd have buttonholes right here. I'm not gonna do that. Buttonholes are optional. You can sew the buttons on and just leave this open. What I'm gonna do is overlap these. Just make sure this fold aligns with there, with that area. And I'm gonna put a few pins at the bottom here. So this is how it's gonna look when it's finished. I'm gonna take a chalk and just try to mark this as the right side of the garment. That will tell me that this is the right side of my collar piece. So I don't get confused when I sew this onto the neckline because what I'm left here is just this. So this is gonna fit the neckline. <laughs> now what we do is just base all these layers together so that they act as one piece. Okay, so here is the collar piece. We're not gonna wear it all up like that. The way to wear it is actually with it open, but I'm just gonna leave a pin to hold it there. Now, when you look inside where the wrong sides are, you'll see notches, those two there, and you'll find some over here as well, right here. Just make sure those are aligned. I'm gonna mark them again because they're inside and I can't see them. So I'm gonna just transfer them over to the right side. This is also a center this is also a mark and here in the placket area in the middle there's also a mark so basically the placket is going to be offset to the shoulder notch on the neckline so it's not going to be sewn on like this it's going to be sewn on like this so this notch here that's going to be in the center front the one at the back here is going to be at the center back and this one's going to be at the shoulder notch on the neckline i've been careful not to manipulate this because it can stretch out at least this knee can so you can see the lower neckline is for the front the higher one is for the back i have notches everywhere i have them here at the shoulder marks although there's no shoulder seam you know because it's a poncho but there is a reference here on the neckline as you can see. I align the raw edges. Remember this is my mark for the right side of my placket. So it's correct to the way it's overlapped. And I'm going to put it in here. And this center of the placket is going to match this notch. That is the reference of the shoulder on this neckline. So that's going to go right there. Then this is going to match this one over here. Here's the other shoulder notch from the neckline matching the next notch and then going around we have this area to pin also. Now this knit is not too densely woven. I'm not happy to just leave it with the quarter inch seam allowance that a serger gets you. So I am going to serge them of course but I'm also going to sew this with the sewing machine at 3 8 because I want to make sure that this doesn't unravel over time. This is a type of knit that does unravel as you can see. So it's not like I could just leave it raw like other types of knits. So there it is, seam on the round, 3-8 seam allowance, also with a long stitch length.
Now I'm cleaning this up with a serger. It's, the fabric isn't hard to sew, it's just bulky, it's fluffy, so it can look quite thick, but the serger is going through all the layers, no drama. So that's how it looks. Now here where the stitch finished, all I did was take apart the four threads. You know, I just undid the loops there and now I can knot it and it'll be a super neat finish. It's not going to come apart over time. So my priority was doing the neckline first. That's done. Now I have all the edges of the poncho to serge, everything. And on each corner you're going to find the shape because later it's going to be a mitered corner. So you don't need to serge the slanted edge only the straight ones so that's what i'm going to do now i have matching thread if you don't have matching thread it is going to be seen when you walk around with a poncho so it was super important for me to get a matching color so that it looks nice because you will be able to see the wrong side of the fabric so the hem of this poncho is going to be a large rectangle and on each corner we have these slanted cuts this is going to help you do the mitered corners without thinking about it or measuring or doing anything all you need to do is fold these right sides together here, align your serged edges here and just sew this raw edge. For now we have four of these to do, I've pinned two here on this side then I'll do the others. We'll just get these sewn, I'm just doing it all with a sewing machine, quarter of an inch seam allowance right there. Okay so here's one sewn, then when we flip it we get this beautiful mitered corner and we're going to have the hem allowance on both sides be the same so we'll just repeat that four times this is not a fabric that presses well so i'm going to do the extra step of hand basting it all and then from the right side i'm going to twin needle and that's it super easy to put together When I'm getting to these corners, I can't pivot with a twin needle, so I just lift it and then just move this gently underneath and then I keep going. And this is a boucle knit where the thread is really hidden in there, in the depth of the fabric, so you can't even see it. <laughs> that's how I'm doing the corners. You can see the hand basting there, that's helping me. I hand basted right along the inner edge of the surged area there. That's how I'm going to be sure to catch it because I'm sewing within this basted edge right there. Hand basting for me is never a waste of time because I'm sure that the fold underneath is even and it's not moving anywhere and I'm gonna get a neat hem that's not gonna twist or end up looking funny. Look at this, it's so so beautiful. Look on screen it might look more red than pink but it is a really dark pink. It's so gorgeous. You saw how everything is so easy to put together. These are the mitered corners. I was able to source thread in the same color. You can see the surging inside is the same. That was really important to me because if you walk, imagine I had white thread in there, it would look horrendous. So that is really important to me when I sew to have matching color thread. And then this is the asymmetric neckline. You know, I don't have buttonholes right here. I didn't really think they were gonna be necessary because I'm not going to button it up so it's also going to be flopping like that so even though it is in the instructions it does say it's optional and you can just sew the buttons right through and they are decorative I got my mum to choose some buttons when she went into town she didn't know what to get so I just said just get any metal type buttons so she got these silver buttons I think they look really nice there's no shoulder seam you know if you wanted you can sew the side seams down partially so if you measure from this fold down about 12 inches you could sew right here a little piece and that would separate and give you like a sleeve. So I thought about doing that but then I changed my mind because if I want to travel with this I can take it off and because it's big and extended this could actually be like a whole full-blown blanket if I travel. <laughs> so if I had sewn the side seams like that then I wouldn't be able to do that with this garment so I just decided to leave it open and it's so so beautiful for me a poncho had to be in a really really special beautiful fabric it is a solid but look at this texture it is a solid but look at the texture it's so beautiful i'm just so in love with it it's just so amazing so let's just see this on simple styling <laughs>
Don't forget to check out the Pattern Emporium end of the year sale, 30% off site-wide. I think that's really, really nice. And I'm going to have another video showing you some Pattern Emporium makes, new ones that I've been sewing in the last few days. Really excited to share those. So expect another one really soon. That's all from me and happy sewing.